Okay. Yay. <laughs> All right. So I'm, I'm Jill Strait. I am the Director of Client Services um, at Dorcas Ministries. Um, just to real quick set the context, um, Dorcas Ministries is a nonprofit in Cary, and we are funded by a great big fabulous thrift shop that I hope you'll come visit. <laughs> and it is our primary revenue generator. And the thrift shop supports um, client services, which we kind of break down into three departments. The crisis center, which is where folks come for crisis financial assistance, the food pantry, and then um, we have a training center where we um, um, provide workforce development. So that's, that's a little bit of who we are. I have been with Dorcas for almost 14 years and um, have been had the privilege of being with the organization through a period of tremendous growth and change. And so that's, that's a little bit about me and kind of the basics of who we are. Um, for people that enjoy numbers, I get my slide, there it goes. Um, it's just a little bit, a little slow. Um, so in 20, 2021, um, we're set to provide about, um, with, with about over 500 clients with career coaching, um, with about 1200 or more with training center classes. We will provide over 1600 households with financial assistance. And again, that's primarily rent and utilities, um, medical expenses, that kind of thing. Um, Food pantry is very, very busy, <laughs> and we are set to um, offer about 2,500 households with food, and the total um, food and financial assistance is, is going to top, is, is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2.5 million. We have not run our final reports, but that's kind of where we are, um, which is just a staggering number. When I started, we were somewhere about 400,000, so... <laughs> It's, it's been a lot of growth. Um, but yet there are still so many needs and questions um, and gaps that we are always looking to fill. And that kind of leads me to um, our presentation today. So we have long offered training um, in various forms. We, um, we have done a lot in the way of job readiness, resume writing. Um, I mentioned we offer career coaching. Uh, we offer quite a few health and wellness classes, cooking classes, nutrition classes. We host the UNC Mobile Clinic twice a week um, for well checks. We have had partnerships for many decades in financial planning, tax workshops, all of that. We are a site for launch, the launch program. So we offer a program called Launch Carry. And uh, we do that in partnership with the Rotary and Wake Tech to help people who are budding entrepreneurs. And we have for decades offered educational advising. And that has been sort of a point of frustration. Um, so we have um, often said to clients, um, what about going back to school? So that, that conversation has been a, a common one over the years where we see people that are just really stuck in dead-end jobs and, and don't have much more training than a high school education. And they come to us in a point where you know, they have no savings and they've hit a bump in the road, like they've lost a few weeks work and are facing eviction. And what, when, when we sort of have stepped back and had conversations about the big picture, they and talked about um, going back to school as one, as one possibility. Um, it, it's not a conversation we have with everyone, right? But but for some people, it just, it, it seems like a logical um, solution. So that conversation has always been very hard. And um, what the clients will will talk about is what, what we've found kind of a slick name for in recent years is the opportunity cost. So they say things like, yeah, well, I can't go back to school because I'm working three jobs just to survive. 
how am I supposed to go back to school? Um, before online classes were really big, they would say, yeah, but if, if I go back to school, that means I have to quit one of my jobs and I'm going to have childcare expenses because my mom works at night and she can't watch the kids. It's, there's just no way. I just can't do it. I mean, I would love to do that. I would love to go back to school. I've always wanted to go back to school, but there's just no way. They don't have margins in their lives. They, um, even with financial aid and scholarships, it, it just, it just didn't work. And even if they could kind of patch together a plan that seemed possible, the risk was great. So when, you know, when you're, when you're, your budget is the same as your income and there is no money for savings and you have no cushion, your tolerance for risk is really low. And so that, that it just was too scary. It was too much of a gamble and folks would say, you know, I, I just got to stick to what I'm doing and wait until my life circumstances change. And then maybe I'll think then, then I would really like to go back to school. Um, so sometimes when we got through this conversation and a person would say, yeah, you know, I really think I could make it work. And I think it's possible. I don't know if any of you have ever gone on the Wake Tech website but it's really overwhelming <laughs> and it has many, many pages and it's a complex, it is a complex web in and of itself. And sometimes just the logistics of figuring out what class, when they could fit it in their schedule and how they could make it all work was the, the, the sort of straw that broke the camel's back on the whole conversation and, and it would break down. So, this conversation about going back to school has been one that has just been tough and frustrating and we have not been able to figure out. Even though we have had a really healthy budget for many, many, many years, our, an endowment by our founder for education expenses, that budget has been mostly underspent over the years um, because it was just too overwhelming to sort out. So, Look at my slide. I think it's, I think there's a little delay when I click. So there we go. Yeah. There we go. Um, so we went to Wake Tech. Um, I, I actually worked for Wake Tech for many years and had some really good contacts in the continuing ed department and have sort of had these conversations over the years with them. And they, they've had the same, same experience. They're always out there recruiting students and, and struggle with how to engage folks and have leaned on us over the years to try to help with getting the word out in general about Wake Tech or in general about scholarship opportunities. Um, so we started, we started having these conversations um, about what a partnership could look like to make it possible for people um, to, to make it work and to sort out all the, the scary parts. Um, so what, what we were really looking for was a trusted training partner. I mean, who else are you gonna go to but Wake Tech? They're great and they have so many different programs. And um, I'm sure you're aware over the years, they have really um, refined their messaging and their course offerings to help people move into careers that lead to a living wage and they have scholarship um, funding to support that. Um, so what did little old Dorcas offer, <laughs> great big wake tech? Um, they really were looking for partners out in the community that had trusted relationships that could help with recruiting students, that could offer um, some soft skills support, coaching, encouragement, and um, financial assistance to bridge some of those opportunity costs that, that Wake Tech doesn't have funding for. There we go. Um, so we started having a conversation about what would be the best program so instead of just going out and saying, using our previous approach, which was go to Wake Tech, it's great, and we'll give you money and we'll, make, we'll help make it happen. What we decided to do was focus on a specific program and recruit for that program. 
but we again there were a lot of our, there were a lot of different choices at Wake Tech. So we went we went to Wake Tech. We took our team, um, Ruthie, our training center manager, and I met with Monica Gemperling and Anthony Kaysen, um in the continuing their senior leadership in the continuing ed department. And we said to them, well, we, we really would like to find a program that's workable for our, our typical client who is a single mom with kids, struggling with childcare, working a few jobs, um, you know, struggling with logistics, um, a little bit scared to go back to school, a little overwhelmed. Um, and so we wanted something that was suitable for remote learning, which would help kind of erase or alleviate the childcare need. One that wouldn't have a lot of academic prerequisites. Um, and so we, we didn't wanna you know, eliminate people from the program. We wanted to make it as open as possible. Um, a program that would lead to a living wage job or um, put in, and put them on a career pathway. Um, most of the clients that we were talking to were in pretty much dead end jobs. Um, the training needed to be kind of a feasible timeline. So um, being able to financially support somebody through nursing school or, you know, really long-term programs wasn't feasible for us. It wasn't, wouldn't be feasible for the students. Um, so that, that was another criteria. And then we wanted to make sure that Wake Tech could partner with us on the expense side, that they would have scholarships to support the program. So we were really excited. We landed on the IT Support Technician Certificate. So um, that seemed to be the right fit. Um, the scary thing for us was we were having the conversation in September and the class started in October. <laughs> so we had to like really crank up um, our uh, advertising and marketing and we had to get rolling quick or else we were going to have to wait until the new year and everyone was excited on both of our teams so we said we're going to do it so we kicked things into high gear the um the um graphic on the right is the advertising we used for the class um and um we came up with a catchy slogan break into it for free and we asked all of our clients, um, which we have an email database of about 2,000 households, um, and we invited them to come to an info session. And we leaned on the name of Wake Tech in partnership with Wake Tech um, that we would offer this IT training, that the tuition would be free, that they would get a laptop and headphones that they would have free child care. Um, they would get a $2,000 stipend um, for, to offset that opportunity cost. They would get a career coach and peer support. Um, we just wanted um, students to be Dorcas eligible and our service area is Kerry and Morrisville. So um, we asked that they live in Kerry and Morrisville, that they participate, um, they had to attend and um, and then what we um, didn't promise, but what we said IT support technicians could expect would be to enter the workforce at about $40,000 a year, have opportunities to work from home in a variety of fields. So we asked people if they were interested to register for an info session. Before the, we, we opened that registration, we said, gosh, do you wonder how many people will come? And we said, if 20 people come, we'll be really happy if they, 20 people are interested because this was really short turnaround. We had the info session see on September 7th. And I think that we talked to Wake Tech like the last week of August or the first of September. It was so fast. 60 people signed up. We were like, wow, okay, there's a lot of interest. We went through all the... Um, the, the fine print and the details and asked people if they were still interested. And they met some minimal criteria in terms of having a high school degree and having some basic computer skills, because you have to have some basic computer skills to enter into this program um, to complete an application at Dorcas. So about 23 people applied. 
And um, of those students, um, I believe eight then moved forward with applying at Wake Tech. And let me just move to the next slide. Sorry for the pause. There's a very long delay in my click and Zoom moving my slides forward. Which makes me want to click, click, click. <laughs> I'm going to try one more click. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, all right. So let me just show you a little bit about um, sort of what the breakdown was in terms of sort of the staff workload and and how we how we partnered to get the students from application um, on to actually being online enrolled in the the class. So. Um, our training center manager became very knowledgeable about the registration process. It was pretty lengthy. There was an application to Wake Tech. There was an application to the Wake Propel Scholarship that was the funding source for the IT course. Um, and then there was another application for the laptop. So again, it, it was okay, but it's just a lot. And um, so we... Um, we worked, our staff was in constant communication with the Wake Tech staff to make sure everybody got their applications, everything that they needed to satisfy everything. And there was a lot of back and forth. And that was really, really helpful because there were, um, there were little errors and drop balls and things that the students didn't understand. So there, we needed that registration support to navigate it. Um, and the students needed that. So they, um, they completed all those, um, all of those parts. At the end, the students, uh, several students were over in common, didn't qualify for the scholarship. And those two, there were two that were over in common. They actually elected not to move forward with the program, even though we still were going to provide our part of the support. It just wasn't possible for them. Um, and then quite a few students just really looked at the reality of what was going on in their lives and decided it, what the timing wasn't right for them. Um, but for those that did, um, did enroll, um, then of course, Wake Tech um, had um, provided the online training. Um, and that is actually, um, I think my number is wrong there. I do, I think it's actually a 16 week. It's a, it's more like a full semester. Um, and then most recently, um, we have been in conversation with the apprentice, apprenticeship program at Wake Tech, and they have been, in co they have been coming and talking to our students about apprenticeship opportunities. Um, actually, even prior to graduation, they're eligible for some apprenticeship, full salary benefit um, apprenticeship programs. So, um, so that's been another huge source of support and help helping facilitate that transition from, um, from being student to being employed. So Wake Tech's been fabulous. Um, so what Dorcas's role in the partnership has been on the marketing and recruiting side, um, um, I believe that's been a huge help to Wake Tech. It's helped them reach um, an audience that they've struggled to reach. It's helped fill seats where they have had um, empty seats and, and struggled to fill classes. Um, we also offered the registration support. So we had the students in our training center um, helping them make sure they got the application complete. So that was a good partnership. Um, and then of course we offered the opportunity cost grants in addition to the scholarship that Wake Tech offered, um, again, to make it financially feasible for the student to participate. We've, um, we've formed these, the students are their own Dorcas cohort um, in the class. So they have separate meetings outside of class time that are just their Dorcas meetings. And um, that has been tremendous. They've formed friendships. They come, they, they have, they, they have, 
formed their own study groups um, and we have um, required um, for them to have cohort meetings twice monthly for the purpose of professional development, um, job readiness. We've had um, speakers come in and talk to them and they do a lot of kind of sharing and exchanging ideas about what they're learning in class. And it's a happy hum when they're in the training center. They're talking and, um, and discussing opportunities and the job market and networking. So that cohort model, um, that relational model is, is um, a space that Dorcas is really strong in. And, and I think that's made a huge difference in the retention. Most recently, as of like last week, um, we connected with Dress for Success. And um, just like I mentioned, the apprenticeship emerged as an opportunity um, with Wake Tech. We, um, we also, a, a partnership with Dress for Success just emerged as word sort of gotten out about um, this program. And Dress for Success prepared beautiful um, suiting kits with everything that a person would need for an interview, including shoes and a purse and accessories and everything. And we were able to present those to students um, today. They came by to pick up their Dress for Success kit. So um, the, the word pilot is key here. This is a, this is a pilot program, um, but it just seems to keep growing um, momentum with partnerships, so it's exciting. Uh, let me move on to my next. Slide and the great delay. Mm -hmm. There we go. Okay, so the cost. Um, so Wake Tech um, provides about um, $1,250 per student, and that is the tuition and the laptop. Okay. And Dorcas provides up to $3,500 per student. Um, the $2,000 in opportunity cost stipend, and then for students that have childcare expenses, we um, offered a $1,500 additional um, stipend for childcare. So the total cost per student is $4,750. Um, our cohort this session is six. Um, we had we were willing um, to go up to twelve, um, but when you do the math, it is it's pretty costly. Um, so we're sort of at 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 a juncture now that we're looking at you know what's our budget, um, where can we find funding. This is a great thing, but it 